Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now in this video, we're going to be taking a look at this a mini HF and broadcast receiver that not only receives FM, it also receives and demodulates AM and SSB. Now this thing is extremely small, measuring around 8 centimeters tall, 5 centimeters wide and only around 2 centimeters deep. Now on the top we have the power button, SMA antenna connection and a push rotary control for changing frequency and volume and a whole host of features within the menu. Now you would have noticed a nice clear color display along with a front facing speaker. Now on the bottom of the receiver we have a 3.5mm headphone socket and a USB-C adapter which can be used for charging the internal battery. Yep, this thing has an internal 2000mAh lithium battery too. Now don't expect mega quality, as you can see the screen on mine is slightly at an angle, although this is pretty easy to sort out if you take it apart. Now the case itself is made from aluminium, so it keeps all those electronics safe. Another nice touch is that the colour screen is very clear and easy to read, even if it's only an inch wide. The included antenna is also pretty good. I performed some tests outside and was able to receive some broadcast stations on the FM radio broadcast band around 99 megahertz. And I was also able to listen to someone on 20 meters, although nothing beats a dedicated antenna for the band you want to listen to. Now one push of the rotary dial will bring up the main menu. While turning that rotary dial control, it will move you along to different features within the menu. Just push again to enter onto that menu area. Now here I've gone into the handband selection menu, choosing 12 meters and then pushing the knob. This will then make the receiver tuned to that selected band. Now the rotary control changes the frequency at a lowest step of one kilohertz. However, if you enable the BFO mode within the menu, then the rotary control will now tune to the nearest hertz, which is much better for SSB fine tuning. Now there's lots of other options in the menu such as bandwidth. Now this is useful if you want to change the receive bandwidth say between 1 and 4 kilohertz. Most of the time 2 or 3 kilohertz is fine but if the station is broadcasting wide you have the choice to raise this to 4 kilohertz or if you want to listen to some CW then you can drop it right down to say 1 kilohertz. Some other DSP features like attenuator and AGC are also included in the menu, although I'm not entirely sure how effective they are as I've not really played around with them. So another little test that I wanted to perform on this receiver was whether or not the audio quality out of the headphone socket was good enough to feed into an FT8 decoder. So I hooked up the receiver to my NFED half-wave antenna and then connected the headphone socket to a little USB sound card. I set the frequency to 14.074 and the mode to upper sideband. I also set the receive bandwidth to 3 kHz. Now upon starting WSJTX, I had to change the audio input source to the USB sound card and voila, we started to see FT8 transmissions being decoded. So obviously here, I'm using my home Windows 10 computer. However, I'm pretty sure that there is a mobile app which could do the same. So with a mobile tablet and this receiver, you could peep into the world of FT8 without much effort or radio gear. Anyway guys, I hope you liked this video and if you've got something similar to this, then let me know what you've got. In fact, this particular product uses similar hardware and firmware to the ATS25 receiver that I reviewed a few videos back. Now I'm sure some of you have been waiting to see if I took this thing apart. Well, as you can see, I did. And in my opinion, there is not really that much to look at. 
This is a receiver after all, so there's not going to be any juicy filter or PA parts to examine that you'd find in a transceiver. However, it does appear to be rather well built, apart from the LCD side where the LCD has gone wonky because of some of the glue has failed. Although this isn't really a big deal, as I could repair this in a few seconds. Anyway, until the next video, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.